All right, for those of you that have been asking about how we do our power rack and pinions on the four wheel drives, I uh, just thought I'd show you guys a little bit of kind of the basics of what we do. So start out with a third gen Dodge two wheel drive uh, rack and pinion. So just a factory part from Dodge. And those usually come with the, I don't know what you call them, control arms or whatever, the arms that go all the way out to the end um, usually come with that. And pretty much don't use any of those except for the very inner part, the, the part that threads to the rack. So the first thing I do is I take the boot off that comes with it and then those will unthread from the rack and pinion. You take that and you actually end up cutting it like right behind where the, well, the CV knuckle is on those um, arms. So all you're trying to do is to get the threaded part and to get something good to weld to. Uh, the reason I do that is because these clevises, I haven't been able to find any that actually fit the thread of a Dodge rack. So I buy uh, clevises that they use on Duramaxes and end up welding those to the, the threaded part of the rack and pinion. So that's how we get the clevis onto the rack to where you can do a good heavy uh, heim joint uh, control arm setup. And then on the outers, um, I don't remember, they're like a taper pin um, that converts to um, a straight shaft for a heim joint. I believe Thurin makes those or either that or Camberg. I know that these inner pieces come from Camberg. Uh, can't, don't totally remember where we get the outers from, but those are fairly uh, common piece that if you look for, you can find. So that's kind of the basics of the parts that you need for the rack. Um, we'll end up mounting them then. Um, I get uh, a solid piece of steel that fits, I believe it's an inch and three eighths diameter that fits right into the bore of the mount there and then uh, I'll through drill it and make to where you can put a high grade bolt through it and it bolts directly to the, the mounting bracket then that way. Um, I'll put one of the mounts on the differential cover so pretty much just take um, some pieces of steel and profile it to the shape of the cover and weld it directly to the cover and then the other one gets mounted to the axle and then pretty much if you need to get to the differential to do service it or anything um, just take these two bolts off the rack will come out of the way fairly easy and then you can still take your differential cover off uh, fairly easily without uh, too much being involved in doing that so once that's mounted um, the other thing you have to uh, do on, especially if you're in a like a factory frame situation, is you have to come up with a solution for the track bar because the track bar is right in the way of that. Um, oftentimes I'll end up doing a diagonal bar on the bottom of the control arms. Uh, that's what we've done on most of our race trucks. Um, this particular one, we had some oil pan clearance issues with the 6.7 power stroke, so we ended up doing a uh, control arm uh, up for our track bar up front here and just we're able to tuck that in there and keep it out of the way of everything so this this one is a little bit shorter than what I would like on most of them but I kind of saw it as my only choice and means it's not an off-road truck and we don't have drastic amounts of travel it, it shouldn't be an issue with what we're doing um, and then going from there, the other kind of tricky part is doing the steering shaft. Uh, always there's, um, you know, frame and engine mounts are, engine mounts are a really big deal to get around if you're doing it in a factory kind of a location. So you often have to kind of modify the engine mount and clearance and uh, do a few different things there. But the, the other thing you really need to pay attention to is being that the rack is on the axle and it moves up and down, you know, as the, as the suspension uh, goes in and out, you need to make sure that you have enough travel in your collapsible steering shaft. So here, um, I don't know, I needed, I needed a total of four inches of travel. So by the time I got my overlap and everything, it, you know, makes for about a nine or a 10 inch shaft before you can put a knuckle in it. So then at the top end of it, just use the heim joint to support it to the frame and then uh, being I have such a drastic turn on this I use the double heim to to make the turn up top and anytime that you use a double heim 
you're going to need to support the shaft on either side of the heim joint uh, just to take, I don't know, there's extra play in it if you don't. This, uh, the back support here on the other side of the double heim, I just used a tube end and a heim joint and instead of welding the tube end into this, I ended up drilling a hole and bolting it. The reason for that is so that if you need to adjust the height of this, you can easily, all you need to do is take the bolt out and loosen the jam nut and then you can spin the tube end to adjust the height instead of having to take the heim joint completely off of the steering shaft to adjust the height of it at all. Um, so that was just a little bit something and then also if you need to disassemble it, it'll make it a little bit easier. You can just pull that bolt out and that whole support and everything will come with it. Um, I wasn't quite sure if this steering shaft was going to be in the way of doing heads or anything like that. I just wanted to try to make so that they could easily remove that if they had to. So that's kind of the basics of it. Just pay a lot of attention on your steering shaft that you have movement everywhere that you need movement uh, because ultimately that's your control over the axle and if something goes wrong there it's going to get ugly. So make sure you do your homework and everything's right. Check your range of motion once you have it all done. You know, Put the truck on a lift and let it hang. Make sure everything works. Get your suspension fully compressed. Make sure everything's okay that way as well. So uh, that's kind of the basics of doing a um, power rack and pinion. It uh, is nothing super fancy, but yet you need to pay a lot of attention to a lot of different things and there's a good bit of time and custom fabrication involved.